Hi again, Red Hat developers. This is Jason with the Red Hat Developers Program. On day two of Summit 2027 or 2017, we're in the Dev Zone with Ken Finnegan, and he's going to talk to us about Wildfly Swarm on OpenShift. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, as uh, Jason said, uh, my name is Ken Finnegan. I'm uh, one of the leads of the Wildfly Swarm project, and I'm going to talk to you today about Wildfly Swarm and running it on OpenShift. So I'm going to cover Wildfly Swarm briefly. So what is it? it? We start with Wildfly and Java EE, and we take a modern cloud application look at things, and we add some non-Java EE pieces to give us those extra cloud native capabilities we need. And one of the big differences with Wildfly Swarm versus Wildfly is we package things in an Uber jar, which includes your deployment, or the other option is to use what we call a hollow Uber jar where your deployment is excluded. Now this has a slight advantage in that you can define all the pieces of Wildfly Swarm you want and say, create a hollow jar that can be used with many different web applications. So it gives you a lot of reuse there. So Wildfly Swarm is just enough app server. So we, as I said, we bundle your deployment, whether it's a jar or a WAR. And then we have what we call fractions, which define the pieces of Wildfly that you include in your Uber jar. And so uh, we can see on the right here, we've got a JAXRS application, and we only bundle JAXRS. We don't bundle EJBs or CDI if you don't use those things in your application. Uh, along with the fractions inside the Uber jar, we have the, an internal Maven repository, which has all the dependencies the project needs. It's also possible to specify that you don't want to bundle those, but then you need a fully populated uh, Maven repo locally to where Wildfly Swarm is running for that to work. And then there's some bootstrap code in there as well to fire up the Wildfly server. So fractions. I've already mentioned, but uh, to go into a bit more detail, they enable different Wildfly subsystems, such as InfiniSpan or Weld. Um, but it's not just Wildfly subsystems. They can integrate additional frameworks and services. So for instance, Wildfly Swarm has a topology uh, infrastructure for doing service registry and discovery. Uh, we can provide deployments that get added into the server as well, such as the Swagger UI or the Jalokia WAR. And using the Wildfly Swarm fractions brings in whatever API dependencies might be needed. So in the case of the JAXRS fraction, that'll bring in the JAXRS APIs from Java EE that are needed to code your application. And we can also alter deployments and modify the behavior of the application. So we can do this with Keycloak, where we uh, automatically propagate the bearer token through requests for you without you having to manually code it. These, ma these uh, fractions are expressed, expressed as Maven GAV coordinates. So we can see here that they have the group idea of org wildfly swarm, and then the fraction name and a version. So on the line below, we can see that there's an example of the undertow fraction and the 217.5.0 version, which came out a couple of days ago. Currently, we have about 184 fractions. Uh, 158 of those are stable, and 26 are what we call experimental or unstable. So these are things that might be new to swarm or areas that we're not completely familiar with. So we want to give them some time in the community to bake and become uh, more stable before we say we're happy with these and th these are available for regular use. So of those 184, currently about 80% of them wrap Wildfly features. So whether that be Java EE or Wildfly Camel or any internal pieces of Wildfly that might be needed to run the server. And there's more coming in the pipeline all the time. And we've recently added ones for Flyway and Drool Server and uh, just to name a few, and uh, we're always looking for additional community contributions of fractions. So now I'm going to do a bit of a demo using launch.openshift.io. So this is the main page of launch.openshift.io, and in the top right corner here, we've got the request early access button. So feel free to do this in your own time and request access. We will be uh, looking to grant access over time to this site. But for right now, I'm just going to take you through how we can do things here. So we can see we've got a choice of three different runtimes, one of them being Wildfly Swarm. So if we were to go through this process, we uh, then get the choice of how we want to get the deployment, whether it's with a continuous delivery model or providing a zip file that you can then do whatever you want with. 
So in this case, I've chosen continuous delivery, and then we get the list of missions. Uh, so at the moment, there's a health check or a basic rest uh, mission available. We're looking to expand these over time. Um, so I've chosen, in this case, the rest. And then on the next screen, we get to choose the runtime. And obviously, I'm choosing Wildfly Swarm, as that's what I'm talking about. So then from there, we define some basic project info, giving a project name to OpenShift. I've chosen to leave the GitHub repo blank, so it gets the same name as the project. And then there's some group and artifact IDs and versions that you can customize if you choose. And from there, we get a review screen where it basically goes through everything that we're going to do when you click Launch. So when you click Launch, it goes away. And in each step, it'll go through and create a GitHub repository. It'll push all the booster code into that GitHub repository for you. Then it'll create the project on OpenShift Online. And then it'll set up the build pipeline and also the webhooks into GitHub. So if we see that in action, we can see here that this is the cloned GitHub project that it created for me. And it's uh, now available in the OpenShift web console. So this we have in the bottom, we have the Jenkins master and slaves. And this gives us the continuous delivery pipeline. The top one here is the actual booster with Wildfly Swarm that we created. So if we click on this, it'll load that. And it's a, not a short URL, but it's accessible to the public. Uh, and without doing anything, I can just hit the Invoke button. And we can get the response back saying, Hello World from Java 1. Well, that, that, that's not right. So let's uh, go in and fix that. So I've already cloned the repo. So I have it locally. And this is the, pr the code here. So if I go into the endpoint, and I want to change this to be Red Hat Summit 2017, and now I obviously need to uh, add that into a new commit. And then we need to push that up to the uh, GitHub project. And then now that that's started, we can go back. And we should see over here that we've kicked off a new build process. So that's going through the continuous delivery pipeline, taking the changes we made from GitHub, and then going to push them back into the project. So while that's uh, going on, it shouldn't take too long, hopefully. It's hard to know with OpenShift Online. Sometimes things are very quick, and sometimes they're not. So at the moment, we've still got the old code running over here, and we can pass in names, and it works as, is, as it should. And let's see if we can see what the pipeline's doing, if it's actually doing anything. So it seems to be taking a little longer than it should to start. I'm not sure how much time have I got left, Jason. Oh, I'm fine on time? OK. <laughs> so we'll, we'll leave that going for a minute. And uh, hopefully that'll kick off soon enough. So we have the project over here. And if I uh, refresh the project in GitHub, we can see we've now got the new commit over here already that it's picked up as part of the build. And while that's going on, I can uh, just be, be briefly tell you about a book I've started writing and is now available in Meep. It's uh, Java Microservices in Action. It's uh, focused on Wildfly Swarm, but also covers some of the other uh, projects that deal with uh, Uber jars and just enough runtimes and the like. And you can see here we have a 39% discount code for any Manning book if you use that code right there. And uh, please go take a look at the book. I, uh, I'm still working on it now, but I hope uh, you'll enjoy it and it's a benefit. And certainly provide any feedback that you can. Uh, always appreciated. So if we go back to the web console, and that's still in a state of new. OK, let's see if we can see what's going on over here. So we're going to log into the Jenkins console. Is 
as you can see, I haven't done this before, so I'm just going to give it some access. Okay. Um, for some reason, that isn't hasn't started a build and seems to be working, but not working. So, not quite sure what's going on there. So we'll circumvent that for now, and I'll just basically show it running locally. So we'll start up Wildfly Swarm. And of course we're doing running tests as part of every build. So it's going to go quickly and run a test. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Partner Pavilion Theater. Which obviously fails because I've changed things. So let's skip the test for now. Um, so this will do an inline packaging of the Uber jar and run it. And we can see there we're using JAXRS. And now that's available. So if we go back to a browser and we hit localhost, we can make that a bit smaller. And that's a new version. So if we click OK Invoke, then we can see now we've got the message of uh, Hello World from Red Hat Summit 2017. We'll have a quick look over here, but I don't think, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there, but for some reason that uh, build didn't kick off properly. Uh, normally it works, and it did work perfectly fine last night, so I'm not quite sure what happened in the meantime. Um, so we'll just carry on, and um, that's pretty much it. So if there's any uh, questions from anyone? No? Nope? Okay. Well, Thanks very much for your time, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it.